What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the show. Subscribe, like it, do all the good stuff you got to do and share it around to tell your friends about it. Today's a great episode. We got one of my good buddies, Mr. Tom Seguya. Segura. I don't even know how to say it. I think it's Sagora. Uh, but I'm stoked to have him. The dude is so much fun to talk to uh, and good to look at, ladies. That shiny, beautiful face of his. He's a gorgeous man. Uh, but I got good news. For the fans, we got new merch, baby! Bing, 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 bing. Like this hat right here is on the website. Go to andrewsantinostore.com, andrewsantinostore.com to find all the brand new merch. T-shirts, hats, highball whiskey glasses with yours truly's mug all over it. Um, I'm pretty proud of this stuff. This is this is uh, the first time that I've been like, oh yeah, we can roll out all this good new stuff. And uh, I think people will like it. So go to andrewsantinostore.com to check out the merch. Go to my website, andrewsantino.com, if you want to find out everything else you need to know about me, including links to the Patreon, which I highly recommend because I'm doing one-on-one Cheeto chats, more intimate episodes. The solo eps are there. So go over there to the Patreon at andrewsantino.com. But if you want to pick up some new merch, go to andrewsantinostore.com. Support the Whisk Ginge crew, please. Whiskey Ginger fans, get your lips on some of this. Drink up some Buffalo Trace. It's the only bourbon with balls since 1773. They've been operating as the oldest running distillery in the United States, my friend. The oldest continuously operating distillery in America. Buffalo Trace is the best. I've talked about this sauce before. It's my favorite juice, man. They make so much good stuff. And these guys aren't messing around. And Kentucky said that uh, it's vital medicine right now, so it needs to continue during the pandemic. And I couldn't agree more. This stuff is good to get inside your body. Um, They got some great stuff over there. I visited the campus. It's incredible. They're great people. They age this bourbon for uh, a minimum of eight years, which is longer than most bourbons that you're going to get in your hands. For the quality and the price, it's incredible. I can't talk enough about it. The other guys, you know their competition, those other common names, those two guys that start with J, they're boo-boo compared to this stuff, man. This is the good jazz. Honestly, it's uh, high-quality, high-level stuff. And their other stuff, Eagle Rare and Blanton's and Pap Pappy, is uh, just as good as this jazz in a different way. Um, go get your hands on some of this right now. They're not going to slow down. They're keep pumping it out. And they're donating uh, to those in need, to our heroes that are on the front lines doing the good thing, giving them alcohol so they can wipe their hands, not for their stomach. That's this stuff. Uh, But it's distilled, aged, and bottled by Buffalo Trace Distillery, 90 proof, Franklin County, Kentucky. Buffalo Trace is American family owned and fiercely independent. Go grab some Buff Trace near you. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. I got his fucking Air Force Ones on, dude. I got some kicks. You match so well, too. It was, you know what? It was a coordinated effort today. Meaning that... I knew I was coming on here for the first time, yeah. waiting for the invite for a while, but coming on. Not true. And I was like, I threw these on, and then my son, w- one of my sons was standing next to me, and he was like, what shirt are you going to wear? And I was like, wow. uh, I don't know, man. I started pulling shirts out. He goes, why don't you just pick one? You know how fucking stupid you feel? As how old adult? is your son now? He's four and a half, the older one. He's wow. like, why? I, he, he goes, why are you? Because I, I was like picking out different shirts. And I go, well, how do you pick? He goes, I just pick one. Smart. And I was like, yeah, dude, all right. He knows he knows exactly how to dress. And yeah. he said, Dad, you got this, you have to fix this up. This has to match that to match the kicks. And it does though. It all matches though. Well, you look good. Thanks. I have I have on this is really Those embarrassing. Are nice. Yeah, these are cool Stan Smith, but they've got these um these hard ties at the end. Yeah. But sometimes they clank when I walk. Uh and it's embarrassing. Those I, look good. Uh, but I walked into a cafe and they're like, click, 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 click. I mean, this is also, by the way, matching on its own level. Yeah, this yeah, is a match. I do matchy stuff, but it's because I only have three colors. Yeah, I'm kind of like you. People uh, talk about me in the comments always like, oh, where, buy new clothes, but I can't afford it. And people need to know that. I, I don't have any money to buy new clothes. I knew that. Yeah, you know that because you care about me, but they, they you know, they just want to like, b- you know, belittle me. And it's like, dude, I can't afford to buy new stuff. So black. Uh, and and blue and gray is all I can afford. Mm. Once you get into like reds and yellows, greens, teals, all that stuff, it's expensive. Those are thousands and thousands. I, mean, I imagine. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Isn't that what they cost when you go? I I have a few. I have a yellow shirt and I have a teal shirt. They were right. twenty eight hundred bucks each. A piece. A piece. See, and that sounds that's expensive. for the color. It's just for the color. Do you wear them ever? I mean, on special occasions, you know. Mostly, right. I, I wear black because it's free. 
Yeah, black is always well. That's why I wear these pants. These yeah. are free. Everything yeah. black is is free clothing wise. Everybody knows that. But mm-hmm. one day I'll tr- I'll get into if I mean you know if something good happens in the biz I'll be able to afford a yellow or, or blue shirt. I'd love to be there that day. I'll invite you. No. Okay. Uh, I want to introduce my guest. Uh, I should do that first. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It is Tom Segura. Yeah. Thank you. It's not welcome back though. I'm welcoming the guests back because they. Oh, you're welcoming yeah. them back. I'm welcoming the fans the back. The fans back. Yeah, okay. they're they're they. They're returning. They're returning. Yeah. No new fans will come from this, is what I'm saying. I never get new fans ever. I've had the same 55 listeners since we started the podcast. That's fucking. That's growing. It's big. <laughs> that is big. It's big. We're taking over, and I got to tell you, I don't. Uh, I don't really want more people to listen to it. I think this is. We're going to settle with this. So cheers to that. Yeah, cheers. A uh, bottom clink because I we can't um, yeah. the pandy we can't touch. Just a little bit of something for the mm. Mm. blood. Isn't that good? Mm. Isn't that good. I like it. That's Hollywood stuff, dude. You got this from Hollywood. I called my guy Mike Hollywood and I said, "Can you get me some blood?" Yeah, yeah. This is uh this is a forty eight year old Puerto Rican man's blood. That's good. It's really good. And it fucks you up if you drink blood? Yeah, it fucks you up that. enough. Yeah, because it, it messes with the, the levels of your own blood. It gets into the side of your own blood, and you get a little bit more, you get a little, little lucid. And I bet if it doesn't match, that's probably not good for you, but that's probably what makes it feel good, right? You poop it right out. You poop it right out if it doesn't match. Oh, really? Yep. Not a big deal whatsoever. You'd be a good doctor. Thank you, dude. <laughs> um, I just need to inform some people. For people that don't know, Tom Segura is probably one of the most... I would famous is a, a dumb word. Infamous um, comic orators of our time. Uh, a little unknown stuff about you that people don't know is you you actually wrote the original screenplay for Hamilton for the show for the play Hamilton. Yeah, which I think is so annoying that that guy took all the credit for it and took all the royalties and took all the. Oh, you're not getting paid. Nope. That's offensive, dude. Because yeah. that's your play. So Lin Manuel and his his mom and my mom uh-huh. were like friendly, and they you know they used to like spick shit together. And so oh, like, cool. So like when you know we got to talking about he likes hip hop, and I was like, yeah, right. I do too. Right. So we started um, kind of going back and forth, and then he's like, you know, do you know anything about history? And I was like, don't know anything about history, dude. What like what do you want to know about? And so I started. I'm the one that gave him the whole background on right. you know like on Hamilton. Dude, yeah. So, so he he didn't know any of that stuff until you. Nothing. What a thief, dude. No, well, not, nothing. He was like, we were founded in sixteen. I was like sixteen. He didn't, he didn't know. know we... Didn't know the year. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is he? What is he? Th- you know what, dude? But and that, and when I saw the goatee, I thought that's that's a t- it's a that's, giveaway. That's a giveaway. Yeah. Tom probably said, "Oh, why don't you shave into a goatee?" Because he he used to have a beard. Yeah. Well, and the goatee. Because what happens when you have a goatee? Your lips look like an asshole. Look, it looks right. like you're. So right. I was like, I know you're an asshole. Yeah. So, you know, why don't you put a goatee on your face? Put a goatee on your face. God, that's smart. That's yeah. a smart. Well, you do so many other great, wonderful things. Uh, you have a podcast that I loved coming on. Um, that's. A, I should let me redo that. You have a you have a podcast that I enjoyed being a part of, um, mm. and it's called Where My Mom's At, and that's that's unbelievably. It's an unbelievably funny podcast and i can yes. listen to it all day thank you it's really good it is really good and it's uh it's christina's that's her that's her mom podcast oh where, where my mom's at no and, christina's is the uh your mom's house no the other way no christina's podcast is your mom's house and well it's also hers because she co-hosts right. oh so they're it. both hers well i mean yeah but that she, makes sense yeah yeah those are both hers um but speaking of which, dude, speaking of hip hop, really annoyed uh, at something that that happened not too long ago. What's that? Uh, that you wore a Gangstar shirt uh, from our mutual friend yeah. DJ Premier, yes. and he tweeted about it or grammed about it. Yeah, and uh, you know, I wore three Gangstar hats, and I, you know, that he sent to me, and I and I got no love, and it really like kind of hurt my feelings. Isn't it the fucking like the post is obviously flattering, but isn't it crazy to have a relationship with him? I was in my bed. I'm t- he's texting me one morning, and I said to my the old bag, my wife, mm-hmm. I said to her, this is the craziest shit on earth. I'm texting my literal musical like hero as a kid. Yeah. And she was like, w- who is it? I said, it's DJ Premier, a gangstar. She's like, oh, yeah, I like gangstar. Yeah, you play me gangstar. And I was like, isn't this insane? She's like, yeah, that's cool. But she, it's like she didn't... 
It didn't register. I'm so, like, babe, dude. this is if Whitney Houston texted you. <laughs> right, right. Like, that's what that. That's what dude, this is. I got okay. So I've always been a huge, huge fan, and mm-hmm. I know a few hip hop people. He is like the absolute top of the food chain to me and i yeah i would never you know i've on on social media i've liked stuff I maybe i've commented once or twice yeah but you know it was from a dis. i never like was like trying to get in there you know what i mean i was yeah, like that, that feels like a a weird it's weird to fish for a hip-hop friend yeah like you know whatever happens happens right dude so i wore a, sh- a shirt that i that i bought from his store right on something and he he posted in his stories and then he sent me a message and i was like wait a minute and i had to keep looking at the name to like, like i was like is with the check mark i was like no this is a he's fan not account. doing this yeah and then i like went back to it and i went back to the message and then he was like like the special is great and i love the podcast and i was like wait uh. what so i responded and we started going back and forth and i immediately started to do screen grabs and I, my two college roommates who we all listen to the same music together yeah. i was like you're definitely going to shit your pants on this one because sometimes they've seen me like you know uh, on a show or in a movie or something or some comment and they'll go like isn't that crazy that you i go you guys are gonna die yeah you're gonna die and they're like what i go you have just i am chatting with like our i said you know yeah hero and they're like what who and i said primo and they were and they just sent like blown brain emojis yeah, those, and they those, were like oh. yeah and they were like no and i and so then i sent them and they were like what the fuck is happening mike one of my friends was like if you are gonna go like hang out while he djs can i please be there just and be I, near you yeah guys? he was like he's like i'll do whatever i'll sweep the floor and i was like i'm just yeah and then we started him him being such a fan of comedy it's crazy it is wild because uh, well the more i meet hip-hop artists as years go on of guys that I lo- have loved yeah. forever, the more you realize that they love comedy so much. And somebody, a fan once asked me, what do they think the connection is? And I really couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, I don't know why a lot of hip hop artists like love stand up comedy. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's much different than other musicians, but for some reason, so many hip hop artists I know through the grapevine that have been like, oh dude, huge, like huge fans yeah. of comedy, which yeah. I'm like, oh, I wonder why that is versus, you know, like at the store, sometimes we would get like, Famous musicians would come through, you know, a couple of bands that are big into yeah. like the comedy world, but it's it's more rare, you know, like um, uh, uh, Rory Scovel and all those guys. They know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the, Jack White. Yeah, they know Jack White right. and and that whole crew. They kind of they, like they're into it, and I know that like um, Tool apparently, like the guys that you know they followed Tool. Do you know about this? They yeah, went on the road. They followed Tool. Rory did that too. Yeah, and uh, they and they figured out, I guess, that like Tool knew who they were and was fans of comedy. I was like, I, I think there's like there's this crossover of musicians that always there has is. existed, but a lot of times we won't like they won't admit it. We can always admit that we're huge fans, right? But a, but a musician for some reason because we're clowns, it, like they don't really want to admit that they go to the circus. And also, I think some people will go. They'll just they'll think of if they if somebody says I'm a Santino fan, they'll go. So you like this perspective on mm. something? And the and the. The person who says they're a fan is like the guy makes me laugh. I don't. Yeah, it's just I funny. Don't break down <laughs> right. everything he says. You know, in '98, one time he yeah. he did it. Yeah, well, what's even funnier? Sometimes when someone will claim you said something uh, that you didn't say. Yeah. You know that they're like, nah, but you know he, he when he, he did that joke about this thing, you know, like or someone will say that to me, they go, yeah, Tom did this joke. I don't. I was about this thing, and then I'll tell them who really said it. I'll go, that wasn't Tom. That, that, that was yeah. That, that was some other idiot. Yeah. And they'll go, yeah. I, t- I still don't like Tom for that. Yeah. It's like, you'll get the You still get the thing. <laughs> like, you'll yeah. get it, even though someone didn't. The opposite of that is when somebody goes, uh, dude, I love your bit about The Rock. And I'm like, I don't have a bit about The Rock. <laughs> You're like, they're like, <laughs> yeah, you do. They're like, it's hilarious. And they're, and I can tell how happy they are. They're like, that's the funniest shit. And, and I'm like, like, yeah, no, it's pretty good. And like, <laughs> At some point, you just accept it. You yeah, go, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're like, I show it to all my friends, and I'm like, oh, that's thanks, great. man. Well, you yeah. know, it it is my bit. Yeah, I had a I had a bit one time that uh, this was the best way I've ever heard somebody handle one of these. Like, oh, we have a joke in common. Mm-hmm. I had a bit that was kind of similar to Fitz's. Fitz, Fitz, uh, Greg Fitzsimmons, Fitz Dog had a bit, and he was working out this new bit at the improv or something. And I walked up to him afterwards. And I was like, hey, man, I just want to tell you, we kind of have this like weirdly, there's one link that's pretty similar in this bit. And 
that's how a friend handles it. You know, you just yeah. call someone, you go, hey, yeah. dude, we do this weird. There's something, I just want to let you know. Yeah. It's not the same, but da, da, da. And literally Fitz goes, oh, really? I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, man, who does it better? And I was like, oh, you do. And he goes, okay. That's that. That's all I want to know. <laughs> he goes, he's, as long as I do it better, then I don't, I don't fucking so care. so funny. Yeah, and it was, unfortunately, his take was better. So it was yeah. just, it was annoying because he was right. Like, he had never seen mine. He was joking around, but it, my ego check set off where I was like, yeah, his version is funnier. That is a, yeah, that's a very real moment, though. Who's is better? When you go, oh, wait a minute. Fuck, his is better. Yeah. Like, have you ever had a joke that someone else has done that you never talked about? Did you ever, like, that you never approached them on where you're like, uh, it's close, but it's I not I tried that close. to, like, I've tried to go, if I'm, I remember being at the improv on Melrose and seeing somebody, you know, they just, like, they had like a similar, they had a premise that I'd already done and recorded and everything. Oh, you put it out already. And so I was like, I, I was like, do I say something? And I was like, hey, just so you know, um, I have a bit that like tackles the same topic. Immediately people get defensive. They're like, oh, I'll stop doing I go, no, no, you don't have to stop doing anything. Right. I'm just letting you know. Just in case. That it's out there. And another time I told somebody uh, that kind of thing where I go, um, I'm doing a bit like this. And then. They were like, okay, um, should I should I stop? I go, look, they're different jokes. Yeah, I'm just letting you. I'm letting you know because you know I'm here tonight. That when you see me do it, it wasn't from tonight. Me going like, no, oh, that's a great like. <laughs> you have to like let them know, like, yeah. hey man, I'm already doing this bit. Yeah, you know, I've done that. I mean, my favorite. I've told this story before, but like, I bet I did a bit t over ten years ago on an album. Uh -huh. And it came out, and then Mulaney did a, like a the same topic, uh -huh. and he's like you know, the perfect comedian. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's everyone's annoying. like uh, he's every all his bits are great. So people started to hit me up. This was like a while ago. Like, oh, cool Mulaney bit you did. What was it, by the way? It was a midget N word comparison. I have the same. I'm doing that bit right now. Do it. Run with it. It's brand new. So I did it. Did you say the N word? Yeah. I say it over and over and over. I say it like 45 times. My bit is I don't say the M, M word because the M word's offensive to me. Which is, ah. Uh, little. I say little person. I think the M word is disgusting. But the N word I'll say a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say that a bunch and then I say but little LP. I'll say LP. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he did a, he did a bit like that and then. Well, he did, we did the, the, the similarity is that um, the, the comparison, the premise is the same. Sure. You're comparing the two gravity of the words. We're both probably like, I don't know, man, like 29 or something. Right. Like at the time and uh, whatever. It comes out on an album. I do it on a half hour special. He does his, I think, on an album and a special. They're not the same joke, but they are the same, you know. Set up a set little bit. Yeah, yeah, right. Bit. And I like, you know, we weren't living on the same coasts even. But the funny thing was people, I would get messages like you stole this from him. So I had never seen his, so I look it up, and it's great, of course. It's, yeah, I'm, it's I'm sure it's good. It's, it's great. Um, but then I was like, well, when did his come out? And his came out after. So it was like such a joy oh, I know. to write back to people. So normally I don't, I was like... 2004, you I was just like, put it in there? I just was like, hey, did you ever check these release dates out? Yeah. And then one guy wrote back, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. ah, fuck. But like, of course, I never thought, like I knew... He didn't take it from me. It's like that that premise for a joke could be thought of by anyone. That but it's just it like happens. your execution of it. You know? Right. How you follow through. He did something in the story. And his, by the way, is so much more refined and thoughtful. It's articulate. And mine's more crude right. and stupid. <laughs> his is like his is like a um a French bistro. Yeah. And you're like a, a, a mess hall. You're yeah. you're, you're like a There's food on the floor. Yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. It's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I he did a joke one time that that or was working it out and i think he ended up putting it on something but he came he was at the store and it made me so fucking mad because i literally had written that thing down yeah a week before i'm not kidding we watch we watch family feud religiously at my house we love it it's my favorite thing to keep on because steve harvey is the funniest backhanded compliment passive aggressive yeah. host. like so mean like yeah. so quietly mean like one time a woman goes um uh, <laughs> the question was uh or the category was um Favorite country to vacation to? And the woman goes, we're going to go with Africa, Steve. And he looks at the, he like slow pans to the camera. 
and he just stares for, I mean, no, no shit, like 20 yeah. seconds of TV time. Yeah. And they let it sit and he goes, your favorite country to vacation to is Africa. And even they're like starting to sink in. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, don't show me Africa. <laughs> and it's like, nah. nah. And he just turns back to the camera and it's like so mean. For a TV host to be mean to their, yeah. To the guests. To people who are thrilled to be there. Yeah, they're so excited. And trying so I hard. love this dude. So I said, one night we're watching it and he's being, he's like berating these people. And I go, it's, it's like, why does Family Feud always have a war between a black family and a white family. Yeah. It's like this weird race where it's all, it can't be two black families, can't be two white families, it's always black and white. Yeah. So I wrote down something along those lines of like, um, if you want to know the status of, of race relations in America, just watch Family Feud because it's black versus white and feel how different their answers are yeah. of where they're going. And he, I see him at the store and he says uh, something to the effect John of, does? Yeah, and he says something to the effect of, oh, a, a week or so later, I, he's in town and he goes, um, nothing in life is black and white. Nothing, of course, unless you are contestants on The Family Feud. And he goes into this whole bit and I was like, fuck me. Yeah. I don't know if he ever ended up doing it on something. Well, his, his like, I saw him at Melrose another time doing like stuff that he's, cl it was clearly in its infancy. Right. And it was it was better than everybody's set. Like Everyone's was, well formed. Yeah, yeah. Two year bit. Like yeah. every time I was like, that's such a like such it was either such an interesting thought, such yeah. a funny take, such an original spin. I was like And then I walked out of there and I was like, dude, that was great. And I go, I loved uh uh and I couldn't like cite it. I was like, it was all good. It's all good. <laughs> Every piece of it was very, yeah. you're very talented. Yeah. Uh, I want to dive back into this real fast, honestly, because now I'm interested. Are you an old school, like, underground hip hop fan when you were, in, did you like backpack hip hop or no, that wasn't your shit? I mean, like, you know, I, some underground stuff, like, the thing, you know, I'm 41. So when I was a, when I was eight and nine and first buying, like, tapes and stuff. Yeah, same. There was a rap section in music stores. Mm -hmm. there, there was 10 groups. Yeah. So I just owned all of them. Yeah, you know? that, that, yeah, that was your shit. Like I just had I had Public Enemy, EPMD, Eric B and Rakim, yep. Queen Latifah, yep. Big Daddy Kane, the Fat Boys, yep. Run DMC. Yep. Like yep. that's how I started. Right. And then it just kind of expanded from there, you know. So Right. But did you ever have like did you ever get into like um in the late nineties well, I should say maybe the mid to late nineties is when like backpack rap kind of took off, quote unquote, backpack hip hop, like a lot of, especially growing up in Chicago, for me, it was like the Midwest rap scene of guys like Atmosphere and the Rhyme Sayers guy and uh, Rhyme Sayers crew and Brother Ali and Mediogre and uh, um, uh, Aesop, Aesop Rock prior to Aesop Rocky, which is mm -hmm. so funny that Aesop Rocky became this super Huge, famous yeah. name. When I was a kid, Aesop Rock was an underground hip hop artist who I was obsessed. I was obsessed with who painted pictures verbally similar to the way that like um, Ghostface does, like in this very like weird thematically off, but like it's, I still know exactly Vivid what he's talking about. Yeah, it's really yeah. strange. It's beautiful yeah. the way he did it. But all those guys I really got into heavily. I mean, I, I've talked about it before, but I spent every last dime at this old record store at ASU's campus called Hoodlums. I, every dime I made from work, I would go buy shit from Hoodlums, music of any kind, until the guys finally respected me. You know when you go to like earn a respect of something like that, and the guys are like, he's in here all the time, he knows kind of what he's talking about, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. be cool to him. Yeah. And then they would finally give me early drops, or they would tell me about guys like Mr. Liff, or you know, all this stuff. And then I got, I got obsessive. I got to a point when it was like, honestly, for a poor kid, like I had no money in, when I was in school, it was a bad habit. I was spending like five hundred dollars a week on what music or going to shows. Or, oh, dude, it was obsessive. It was wow. it was almost unfortunate how much money I was spending on. If I ta was talking to a girl, I'd be like, "You got to come to a show with me." You know, like we'd have to go to a show because mm -hmm. if she didn't like hip hop, I was like, "This girl's fucking trash." Like yeah. I immediately was like, "You don't like hip hop? You fucking you're you don't you don't know music." Yeah, it like overtook my life. So I I I just didn't know if you had any of those like underground hip-hop guys that you really got sunk into and a lot of those guys by the way are still around yeah some of them I mean, dude i i made a thing as a joke when i i uh when i tried to fuck with bert mm. uh well i fuck with him all the time but 
Can... He's your handicap friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that I guy. do a yeah. thing with I help him out, put him on a show. Like his whole career? No, like he, he has special, you know. Needs. Right? Right. And so he's like, you know, will you work with me? So oh. it's like a volunteer thing. I oh, bring him in. I right. do a podcast, but like it's basically like helping him, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I've seen, and a lot of people on the internet often say, uh, there's a quote, if you've, I don't know if you've seen it, I don't know if you read comments, but it's always said, um, they call it cool charity. I didn't know what that was. And it's, I guess there's a thing called cool charity. It's a, it's a charity called cool charity and it's money to keep funding you helping Bert because they're afraid that's that cool. at some point you'll get over it and get sick of it. But yeah. I think that's very I imagine cool. you probably feel a certain way about Bobby. Yeah, no, uh, Bobby to me is... Bobby isn't my Bert to you, though, because to you and Bert, like you, there's love in your heart for him. Absolutely. And with Bobby, it's more like um, I, I, I literally ha- I hate him as a human and yeah. as a comedian. And I'm doing it because it's a debt that I owe. And I, and I owe, I have a, I have $185,000 outstanding debt at Caesars in Vegas. Yeah. And I just got to recoup some of that money back. So this is a thing I just need to do. Uh, also, the state gives me forty five bucks a month to, to watch over him. Oh, that's... I have to check on him twice a day. But that's like gas money, right? Yeah, yeah. But honestly, it's it's just troubling because when you have to, you have to wake him up, you have to put him to bed, you have to clean him, and cleaning him is the hardest. Do you have to clean Bert? Mm. No, so you have to clean Bob. And washing him is tough because he's squ- he's squeamish. You know, he's you get short. him in the tub. Yeah, but they freak out. Yeah. Wa- he hates water. He's tubby. Yes, and and when he gets in there, he panics. And he doesn't like shampoo time. And when we dry him off, it's tough. So it's it's a challenge, but you know, I'm willing to do it. Yeah. I'm willing to do it because I'm an, I'm a nice guy and I do I do care about, you know not him, but like maybe other people. Other people, yeah, around yeah. him or repaying yeah. my debts in any in any semblance, you know? I like that. Are you done having kids? Yeah. This is it forever? Did you get I'm going to. You are? Yeah, I'm going to Are you not scared in of that? like a month? I, I had my appointment yesterday for the consult. Guess what? Huh? I have a hornea. You're so horny, you have a hernia? Yep. When you're a hornball, you just get horny, hernias? Hernias? Yeah, they go, it's a hornea. And I go, what's that? They're like, it's a hernia from being horny. Oh. Mm-hmm. So you're such like a sexual dynamo. Yeah. That your body just pushes out stress so and it gonna, turns into a hernia. They're going to fix my hernia and give me a vasectomy at the same time. Where'd you get the hernia from? So I'm on like... Nine weeks. I just jumped into a powerlifting. Uh, Why are you doing that? Because I was just fucking. I wanted something like different and. We crossed the threshold of when that's not okay anymore. I mean, I know. I just was like bored, and I'm doing. I think like, 35 is the number when you're like, I can't be doing power. I think that I fucking did it in the last nine weeks because I'm in week nine of this program, right? <laughs> and I went from doing like functional fitness with a trainer, yeah, to deadlifting three days a week, squatting. Uh, doing overhead press. Are presses. you enjoying it? Yeah, I like it. You do? I like it. And the sad thing is that like, I've made, in nine weeks, I've made pretty crazy progress. Yeah. Uh, and I will lose all of it when I do the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and also yesterday, after I got my, like they, they were like, you have a hernia? I was like, I told the doctor. You, couldn't, you never felt anything? I didn't feel it. Wow. He was like, it's small. Uh, but he's like, it's going to get worse. Like you mm-hmm. have to fix it. I'm like, well... I tell him, obviously, I'm doing this program. Yeah. Can I keep lifting? He was like, yeah. He's like, you can keep lifting. I go... With the hernia? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, but wouldn't it get worse? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and I go, so should I keep lifting? He's like, I don't know. I'm a doctor, dude. I'm not your friend. Yeah. Okay. I go, well, but I mean, I go, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm not a strong man category, but I'm lifting heavy weight. Yeah. I'm doing reps with 300 pounds on dead, like I'm doing reps with it. That's heavy as fuck. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. But I go, and I go, and I, I'm saying it feels heavy to me. It's not about like, sure, sure, sure. What, like to me, yeah. Some I guy feel at home that is it's like, bullshit, yeah. dude. Of course. So I'm yeah. like, the strain is, uh, is uh, I go, it's full body strain. Like I can feel my body being like, holy shit, every time I complete a set of this. Right. And I go, and now it's going to be in my head that my organs are popping through <laughs> a cavity. He's like, yeah, just going to have to see what happens. I'm like... <laughs> I Dude, like, I love... I love. By the way, this is a... a literally, a few days ago, I went in to go to the uh, uh, orthopedist to go see about my leg. I've torn ligaments in this leg playing basketball. Mm-hmm. And I re-injured it. I have a, like a... Um, a like a, the, the, t- the tendon has spiraled, so it now it, it bru- it's bruised. So for two weeks, I was living on it. 36. 
Go ahead. No, no, no. Just, just. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I know. It'll be like. It's it, gonna be worse. It's, it's gonna a, get it's worse. How it all happens. I yeah. know, dude. And so I go in, but I love the the nonchalantness now of doctors, and I think it's because of what's going on in the world that they they kind of don't give a fuck as much as they used to about like like that. Like he was like, uh, dude, lift if you want to lift. What yeah. do you want me to fucking say? That, that they're done being the guy that goes. <laughs> uh, you know, remember when the phrase used to come out uh, when they would go? They said I'd never walk again. I think yeah, doctors yeah, are yeah. done calling their shot. They don't want to Babe Ruth something no, anymore because they don't want to be embarrassed. Nah, yeah, they're like, yeah. and I walked again, Dr. Zeering. So what? <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> they don't want to be that anymore because this this, this doctor, she goes, um, she goes, we need to take x-rays. So she takes x-rays and I said, well, I didn't break it before. I tore the ligament so bad that they thought it was broken because of the bruising was insane. And she takes x-rays. She's like, yeah, you didn't break anything and there's no... Um, irregular uh, tendon placement. So you didn't really tear much, but it's just an, like an ex- the twist and the bruising, right? So then I said, well, I'm in this like, th- I'm in this golf tournament and I like really want to play. Like, is that, are you going to tell me I'm not so shy to not play? And she goes, oh no, you, I mean, when is it? And I was like, that's tomorrow. It was literally the following day. Yeah. And she's like, no, yeah, I just, I mean, Go ahead. you can play. Just, are you going to wrap it? She, she was like, are you going to wrap it? I'm like, should I? She goes, yeah. I was like, what the, what the fuck? I was like, are you just like leaving it up to me? And she goes, yeah, I mean, look, you, you can. Do you play golf a lot? Yeah, a lot. A lot? A lot, dude. A lot. Mm. I know. I've talked about it on here. I'm joining a club. I'm joining a club. I know. I'm a little embarrassed a about nice it. A nice one? Yeah, it's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little embarrassed about it because I, I never came from country club lifestyle. Like you love I golf, t- though. I love it so fucking I, much. Here's the thing. If you get me out there, I would become the junkie. Yeah. See, yes. I, I I I played golf when I was end of high school, going into college. My parents at the time lived on a golf course. Oh, you grew up on a golf course. Well, no, they moved there like ah. as I was going to college. You grew up on a frisbee golf course when you were younger. That's right. Right. And then I went to to visit them, and I had the summer free. I would I was working, but I would had a lot of time. And then they live on the course, so I can just walk. Walk on. And I started to play. And I got here's what I got to. I got to the point where I could join you for a round of golf and not feel humiliated. Oh, dude, let's go. You know, well, no, that's then. Oh, yes, sorry. Then, yes, right. Then, then I uh, played a little more. Then it was one of those things where like, the next time I played golf was like a year later, and I would just slice everything. And, yeah, uh, when you take time off, it's, 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 it really it's, falls it, it apart. It fucks up. Well, dude, and it's funny. As I've gotten older, I've, I've had people go, oh, I didn't, know you, I didn't even know you played golf. Like some, some people that know me well are like, I don't know, because I go by myself a lot, or I go with comics I know that golf. Who, who golfs? A lot of us. I mean, first of all, Scoville, to bring him up again, Rory, Jay Larson, Chris Porter, Brad Williams, uh, Jimmy Schubert. Um, I played with KP Anderson. Do you know KP? Yeah, I know KP. Yeah. Um, my God, dude. It's like an, it's literally, it's who's an endless good? list of guys. Who's good? Um, who's really good? Is Court there... McCown is the best. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Because he was a cat. He catted for Jasper Ponovic, who was yeah. a pro. Court by far is the best. He's like uh, legit. He's a scratch golfer. He's fucking phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, he beats the shit out of everybody we play. When we play and people talk big game, then we put up money. We play money games. And it's never big because I don't feel like losing money to a guy that's that good. Yeah. I'll lose money to a friend that's my level. Yeah. But uh, he beats the shit out of us. Like he's he is so good, it's like annoying. But I'm better than him at comedy, so that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> no, we and then Rob Rob Riggle is a good golfer. He is, yeah. Rob's a good golfer. Wow. Um, I'm trying to think of some. There's sneaky guys that are actually good that like don't really like. It, golf is always this kind of like. Bert's kind of sneaky. Is he good? Yeah, well, what we did is we went to Top Golf in Atlanta. Yes. And it was the three. It was uh, he and me and and uh, Ari. And I thought we were going to go for like 35 minutes. Like it was one of those things where I was like, "You want to have lunch?" And yeah, yeah. Like, do we stay there like six and a half hours? Oh, dude, I've, I've been there. It's a top golf. I've spent oh, two, three hours at top golf. It's so it's so fun. But, and I'm, what I'm saying is that, like, you know, obviously it's not the same as playing golf, but you could tell after a while who no, has a know. nice stroke. Yep. Who, like, and especially because those places, they have you, they have the variations in game. Yes. So it's like, all right, this time we're trying to do this. Everything we were trying to do, I mean, you know, he'd have he'd fucked up shots, but then, like, he was consistently. Hitting he's a stuff. sneaky. He's a sneaky athlete. He's a dude. sneaky athlete. He's like. Um, but then he. Did you see his post the other day? Where he raced that dude. He raced the bus driver. I know. I saw that. And I, I was like, it. he called me before he posted. It. He's like, I lost in a foot race to run. I go, you lost the fucking run? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. I go, how? And then he po- he shows them. It's like they both have their like drinking bellies yeah. and like. It, it's by the way. But also he runs upright. Up straight up. Yeah, I yeah, noticed that. Like, 
His sky, his neck is at the sky. I was like, dude, bend down and go forward. That Ron did beat him. It was very close. It was though. very close. It was very close. But it was it felt so good that Ron won. I know. Dude, when I started watching the video, that's so funny. I started watching it and I was like, I don't want him to win this. And of course, because he was <laughs> I like, wanted him to lose so I bad. love that he left in the stuff before. He's like, I'm gonna kill him. Like, of course. Yeah, no, he, yeah. And then he and then he's like, Well, I already ran today, which is the first things when somebody's like, whenever that dude competition thing happens between men, yep. whenever we do that thing where they're like, you can't hit that shot. And it's like, okay, well, I worked out earlier, so yeah. I'm, of course I'm tired. Like, yeah. you know, the excuses flow. He is, Bert's a sneaky athlete the way that I used to feel about Paul Pierce. Like, Paul Pierce has that body where you're like, this guy's, he looks like a dude I know. Like, yeah, he's yeah. just bigger and kind of slovenly, yeah. but he's unbelievably athletic. Bert would not surprise me on the golf course. I bet you he's very good. There's guys that I play with, yeah. I'm not going to mention names, that have dog shit, dumpy, Awful bodies. I mean, dude, completely out of shape and yeah. actually unathletic as fuck. They couldn't throw a baseball. They couldn't throw a football. But out there, they're phenomenal. Yeah. It's something about... He can dial it in. Them. For golf, like golf, like, he talks a lot of shit for everything and you're like, you can't do any of these mm -hmm. things. But in golf, if you were to be like, this matters, you need to play well He'll today. He'll turn on. He would, he would be able to yeah. play good. Yeah, he's got that thing. He has that like... Uh, uh, He's got that forever focus where you're like, well, I'll just commit everything I have to something. One of my favorite stories is uh, when I was getting to know him, we went to Hawaii. This is like 2008. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really, you know, we're hanging out there doing this show together. And I was like, oh, did you play a, I can't even say. <laughs> I go, did you play football in high school? And he was like, I was supposed to be like the next great player there, but I got injured. I was like, who, what, what? What I do you mean? I was supposed to be. What do you mean? He was like, no, I was like, <laughs> he's like i was really good at baseball and i was like uh-huh and then like i was supposed to be like they were expecting me to be like the next like all state player and i was like why would they expect that of yeah me? he's like because i was just like so good at other things but then like i hurt my shoulder and i was like this guy <laughs> <laughs> that's why they thought you were gonna be the next great thing just because like, just you were good at stuff <laughs> yes expectations that you'll be an amazing athlete you see this something. guy in layup drills in gym class <laughs> you know he'll be you good know he's gonna be an all-state football but there's no doubt about it did you go to school with pro athletes ever i when played against one i had him on my i had heath evans on my podcast oh uh, you went to high school with him i went to high school a uh, rival high school oh, okay and you know what was amazing i was thinking about this yesterday i still can't because i it would amaze me watching um the last dance you know with jordan i was Ugh. like how does he remember like he was like then 1985, the third game of the season, I went for this layup. I'm like, you remember that? You oh, played yeah. like 3,000 games? And like, so with Heath, you know, my, my football career ends as a senior in high school. So I go, well, my memories of those will be more clear to me. Yeah. He went to Auburn and then he played 10 seasons in the NFL. Uh, and I had him on. I was like, I don't know if you remember, but our sophomore year, he's like, yeah, we beat you guys or you guys beat us, but I had 156 yards. I was like, wait a minute, yeah. what? Like, Re dialed that shit in dude he remembered it exactly that that to me this is a great point dude that is the definitive difference that i've noticed between people that are pro athletes yeah and just guys that played up to a certain level because i know guys that played sports in college they don't remember ev much they remember a good amount yeah but pros for some reason they'll name you the fucking second game of high school they'll go yeah i made uh made varsity when i was a freshman and i dropped six and i got benched because i i was close to fouling out and you're like how could How do you, you fucking dude? He remember like so he went to a garbage uh, football team Where'd high he go? school. He went to a place called Kings Academy in Palm Beach, Florida. Trash. And well, they were just a horrible football team, right? But they had him, right, right. But like, so we beat them every year. Yeah. But he like you would you would we all knew his name in high school. You know what it is when you know an opposing player's name. I remember, name, dude. Yes. And you're like like there's Heath. Right. Like in high school. Ugh. Um and. And he was like, I told him, I was like, you know, I remember that hit, hitting him, because like his line was terrible. He was a running back. Yeah. Hitting him in the backfield felt like somebody had a like a vault door and they just threw it in your face. You were like, <laughs> oh my God. Like it didn't feel yeah. like hitting anybody else that right. I ever hit. And I was like, dude, I, I remember the feeling of hitting you that it was like, Jesus, like that guy is a fucking Some animal. people are made, I think, I think like, whether or not you believe, whatever you believe in, God and the universe, and blah, 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 like, I just, you just know if you've ever faced a pro athlete at any point in your sporting career, 
you just can tell that they're made different. They're made different. They're yeah. just they're like we are we're different than you and you know right away. You're like, "Oh, their resiliency, the strength, like there's little things where you go, "Holy shit, you're this is supposed to happen." Yeah. It this isn't I worked really hard. I mean, they do, but it's also like this is you're I built different, this is a though. thing that happened and I just happened to be my high school had I mean, in the in the 4 years I was there, I think we had like 8 pro athletes. And, really? And one Olympian. Yeah. What in Chicago? Is it Chicago? Uh, Western suburbs of Chicago. Yeah, I went to high school in the Western suburbs. Uh, it was crazy. My schools were huge. There were like forty two hundred people Big a piece, school, yeah. and they were sister schools, so they both had the same yeah. size uh, class. But it was like two two brothers that both played in the NFL. Well, there's four NFL players, but two of them that were brothers, which was insane. And then um, in the sister school, uh, uh, Candace Parker, who's like one of the best oh, uh, WNBA players of all time. All time. Yeah, and she, dude, she dunked in high school. I, yeah. I remember when people used to joke about... Well, it was. On, I remember footage of her dunking was on ESPN. It was. Yeah. Dude, when she dunked in high school, it wasn't even a surprise because people yeah. knew about it. Yeah. So when it got national news that she was this phenom, people were like, yeah, we know. Her brother, Anthony Parker, was a pro NBA player, but no one talked about her because it was like, oh, it's a sister Candace. And then by the time she fucking sprouted in high school... Not only did people knew she was people know she was going to be a pro athlete, they were like, "Watch what she does, dude." She used to beat the shit out of the boys team. Beat, the, I mean, like beat really? the shit out of the boys team, and they had good ball players too. She was just uh, uh, like a Built new different. level. Built now, different. Yeah, when yeah. you watch it for the first time, you go, "Holy fuck!" I remember before we transferred, I moved to Florida from Milwaukee, and I went to a big public high school in Milwaukee. Where in Milwaukee? Where did you live? Uh, in Mequon. Really? Yeah. I didn't know you ever lived in Wisconsin. Yeah. You. That's why I like. I like you, and I hate you. Yeah. And I can know. That's now why. You know now. why? Florida. I like you. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Wisconsin. I yeah. know why I hate you. Yep. Mequon. Mequon, man. I went Wait, to. I went to fuck? Homestead High School there. You did? Yeah. How long were you there for? Well, I, I went there for seventh grade, eighth grade, and then the first semester of ninth grade. And so when I remember that when we when I left middle school, by the way, I'm so annoyed. At these fucking, they're like class of twenty twenty, and it goes middle school, and you're like, you really gonna post that? Not a real thing. My kid finished eighth grade. Not a real thing. So, anyway, I uh, we transferred to, or you moved from middle school to the high school. High school at the time, middle school was pretty big. It was like between twenty five hundred and three thousand kids, right? It's pretty big. That's big. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty big high school. Yeah. And you know, you you start like I was playing a lot, a lot of basketball, and I was a uh, I was like a lean, pretty tall. Eighth grader, yeah, playing basketball, pickup games every day, front yard every day. And I remember one day we went to the gym at Homestead, and there was a pickup game going on. And this guy, <laughs> there was two guys. One guy named Afuma Obitua, who Afuma Obitua, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know, I know how he good had he is. fucked off yeah. with athletics. He had a big gut. Uh, and like gave up, he kind of gave up, but he was playing this game shirtless with his gut like <laughs> bouncing, and he did a three sixty dunk. Fuck like, off! And we were like, oh my god! <laughs> and then another kid whose name I don't remember, he went on a fast break, and I found out he was a junior in high school, and on the fast break, he cupped the ball here and did a full. Yeah, oh, like, like a Jordan, that. and then yeah. we all we were like, "Oh my!" And we were like, "Is this what high school's like?" Yeah, <laughs> because like this will be demoralizing. It is though, and that's when you start going. When you go, ah, the fucking tennis is cool. Yeah, that's when like golf for me. Yeah, you're like high school is when I, I really fell in love with golf because yeah. I was like, I don't think I, I don't think I can play Shh. basketball much longer. See, for me, like the basketball thing is more demoralizing. Like in football, you know, yeah, if like we had a when I, in football, I had the hundred meter track champion on my team so like you're just like you like you see him and you're like yeah i'm never gonna catch him yeah but he's also on my team yeah and that's it's great. just and you just watch him and you're like holy shit he's so fast. <laughs> so fast but then like with like with power like with heath and like there's other like i played against some all-american linemen i don't know you just kind of go like yeah i got i got owned this play but the next play maybe you get one on him or sure. something and there's something that for some reason in basketball if you're playing with people who are like way on another level. Yeah, I have. It, it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Ugh. It is so demoralizing yep. to have somebody just like shove you and then dunk and then their dicks in your face. <laughs> and you're like, Fuck it, dude. Baron Davis and I did a show together. We became buddies, and I went and played uh, with them one time just for fun. Yeah, just it's not see. fun. It's not fun. It's not fucking fun. 
even if you're like, I'll just stand at the key, I'll just jack up a three when somebody gives me the ball because they feel bad because, you know, orange whitey is open. Yeah. And even then, it's not fun because yeah. you miss by a mile. And they make fun of you. Yep. And then the, the the opposing team makes fun of you. And then your team goes, "Why the fuck are you shooting that shit?" Yeah. And like, okay, I'll, I'll go sit down. Yeah. I just don't want to. It's like you realize how how much better you need to be to continue to play those kind of sports in life. So bring it back around. That's why I love golf. Golf, golf's great. I don't man. need to fucking do things. I just can be good at my and it's little also, thing. You know, it's a gentleman's sport. Yeah. And like. Even if you you love it for the, because I know it's addict. Like I haven't played in a long time now. It's addictive, and you're outside and beautiful. But you can meet like so many incredible people. In Dude, that, I, it, in that's that my favorite part. By the way, a lot of that's the thing about clubs, which is kind of nice. Is like a lot of old athletes that live in LA. They have they join clubs. Yeah. So you get to meet guys, and you know I'm at no liberty to say, but like when you you're like, oh shit, he played. It's just a yeah, cool, yeah, it's cool thing to see old athletes because. This is another thing that no one knows about old athletes. I don't care what color you are. If you played pro sports, when you're done, you play golf. Yeah. Every single one of them. Like, it, and it, also it like used to be this white of, sport. Like, Not anymore, dude. A lot of these cool old Hollywood dudes play golf. Yes. You know? Yeah, they all do. Yeah. 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 This is pretty cool. Uh, Pesci. Pesci. Stallone yeah. plays. Yeah, Pesci yeah. plays a lot. So I was yeah. just like, it was like, what a cool, what a, what a cool, interesting world to like. It makes you level at some degree of like, yeah, you're, you're here because of your acumen of our business but when we go play golf if i can beat you there yeah it's incredible like that shit feels fucking awesome but yeah of when course. you're like oh dude i'm better than you at this little thing at this thing you're better than me at all the other stuff yeah but yeah no i i i got into it years and years ago and i've kind of you know i've always played it but now i'm getting more into it because are you playing more in quarantine like way in, more yeah way but you've gotten more. better i have but also uh it's been tough because LA opened way after a lot of other, like Ventura County, all these other, they opened up and then LA was like, mm, can not you show yet. up and play alone where you play or no? Or you have to get into a, um, like, well, I'm not a member yet, so I just can't go. Yeah. But at a public course, I go, I play alone all the time. And that's not a big deal. Nope. My wife makes fun of me. I like it. I used to play that. Like I that a lot. love it. I just will go out, you know, if it's early enough, if I want to knock it out in the morning, I'll go out. They may pair me up with one guy. I played with, um, when I played that summer, God damn it, this famous author. Um, Who is it? Dude, I, I got I, I could look it up. Ray Kurzweil. There you go. Uh, Stephen King. Uh, this is how many books I've read. Right, like I'm going to text right now. Yeah. See if I can get an answer while we're doing Yeah, this. that's good. Okay, hold on. In here, we pour whiskey. Gentlemen, listen up. I know you want to smell good. I know you want to look good and feel good. There's a brand new company that's offering a solution to all of your problems in this area. They're called Hawthorne. Hawthorne is incredible stuff. You get online, you take a two-minute quiz. It takes no time at all to run through it. Easy answers. Uh, you tell them what cologne you're used to wearing, what deodorant you use, body wash, shampoo, and they, they create a package that's right for you. Uh, I tried it. I was skeptic. I'm not going to lie. And I was like, whatever, send me this stuff. Let's see how it is. It's fantastic. They know all the clones and all the past stuff that you've used, and they kind of use that and run it through analytics to find out which, which scents uh, are going to work best for you. Uh, so if you're still wa wearing cool water cologne from high school, uh, come on, step it up, or Drakkar Noir. Change up your game. Uh, go to Hawthorne and let them outfit you with some new smells, shampoo, and body wash, which I very much so enjoy. The lady likes it too. A little spritz spritz here on your undercarriage. Stinks good for the late night session, my friend. Go check out their stuff. You really will enjoy it. Take an easy quiz, and then it's totally risk-free for free shipping and free returns. What else do you have to lose? Guys, don't smell like crap anymore. Uh, go to Hawthorne.com. That's Hawthorne with an E, and use the promo code WHISKEY to get 10% off your first purchase. That's Hawthorne, H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E.com, and use the promo code WHISKEY. Get 10% off and smell better. Back to the episode. Ginger. I like gingers. Wait, let, let me let me transition to something else. We used to I used to talk about this on the show all the time, and now I don't anymore. Do you remember your first time that you got drunk? Because I I know you have a relative memory of that. Yeah. Of when you first got fucked up. Yeah. What is it? Can you tell me? Yeah, yeah. What you text? Um, and Tom is texting his agent right now, and I can see it reflecting off of his eyes, and it says, "Get me out of her." And he spelled here wrong. What an idiot! It's he spelled it H E A R. What an idiot! Oh, I hope nobody calls in a moment. Has, makes me leave. <laughs> um, first time I got drunk, drunk. 
The first time I got absolutely shit faced, I was fourteen. I mean, like really fucked up. Fourteen. Yeah. We do an age. We used to do an age scale thing on the show of like who did who got yeah. drunk the youngest, and I think fourteen might be it because I'm I'm fourteen, just about to turn fifteen. It was my f- almost fifteenth birthday. You're fourteen. You, you that's young. Yeah, I was pretty young, and I was in Cusco, Peru. Cusco, Peru. Yeah, and I was with my cousin, my American cousin Brian, and my. Peruvian cousin Juan Luis. Wait a minute, Juan Luis wasn't the American cousin? No, he's the he's the Peruvian. <laughs> he was. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so great. You're and, like my American cousin, <laughs> my Juan American Luis. cousin Juan Luis, and this Indian guy Brian. Um, <laughs> so I got absolutely. I mean, they would have. They probably should have put me in the hospital. Have I, you tasted booze before that? I moment? tasted booze okay. and I had a couple drinks before, but I'd never gone full bore. Full bore, and yeah. I was having pisco, which is like a, I don't know what that is. The Nash, it's kind of like the the national uh, liquor. Pisco, pisco, p i s c o. Yeah. Is it is it a clear liquor or a dark? Clear. Liquor? Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's like uh, I guess it's considered a I think it's considered a rice liquor. You know how they make liquors of different. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'm trying to just. Well, you know, you... like 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 rice wines or like like soju. Okay, sorry, colorless or yellow. Yeah, colorless or yellowish to amber colored brandy produced in winemaking regions of uh, Peru and Chile made by distilling fermented grape juice. Yeah. Sorry. So I'm just letting you know what it is, but it's No, but I like that. I like to know. I used to so I had sampled they have a drink it's a very famous drink called pisco sour. Pisco sour. Yeah, and it's it's like the national And everybody has it. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a staple of the Does it taste good? Yeah, it's great. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. it's delicious. So we start drinking them and I my older cousin who lives down there is probably, man, like at least 10 years older than me. So he's probably like 25, 26 at the time. He's got a chaperone, making sure we're all like, yeah, we're, right. We're right. big boys, but he's, you know, yeah. he's the adult. Um, I, I don't remember so much when things turned, but I remember that I just stopped speaking English. <laughs> you speak Spanish? Only Spanish. <laughs> and uh, my American cousin was like, you were uh, berating me for my my poor Spanish, but you did it in Spanish. <laughs> and um, then I, I had a jacket on. It gets cold. It's up in the mountains there. Sure. And um, I lost it at a bar. And then I just cried <laughs> about my jacket. And and they had to like care. I mean, I threw up on the streets. And they had to carry me back to the hotel. And I was bawling about my jacket. Yeah, you missed that fucking jacket. I missed that jacket. <laughs> and then I would just turn to my cousin and I was like, You're, you only speak English. <laughs> like, just like being By the way, belligerent. I bet you woke up the next morning and you felt fine. Yeah. Those days are so fucking far gone. They're gone. I miss them. Like I miss the idea of just... Those two sips will fuck me up for a week. Really? No. But I, <laughs> no, like, but seriously, some people are like, I have one drink and I'm not feeling well. If I have booze, mm-hmm. like I can have a couple beers, fine. Uh, a f- more than three, it's like a problem. Yeah, I don't have beers anymore because of that. Wine is like the only thing I feel like I I don't really think about it afterwards. Yeah. But if I have like two bourbons, I'm... No, it's not that I'm fucked up. It's that the next day I'm like, oh man, like I don't feel great. Yeah, your energy's back. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel good. There's something about it that, like, uh, that, uh, that, but because wine is typically accompanied with meal, right? Yeah. So you're gonna have food with it. Where bourbons, I've sat at home on a stomach where I haven't eaten my dinner and just had a couple of sips, had a couple of sips, had a couple of sips, and then the old bag is like, let's go do something, and then we go do something somewhere, and then it turns into like I've had a night of bourbon. And the next day is ruined. I yeah. never used to be that guy where it was like, it ruined the day. Now, if I have too many, I officially ruin a day, which yeah. didn't exist back in the day. I was it, like, nah, it ruins I, the day. Yeah, it ruins the day. The day is beat. It's, I hate it that. Sucks. Yeah, no, I can't do it anymore. It's, it's just a bounce. bummer. I don't know. Like the body. Because, oh, yeah, we were talking about, you know, things start, like uh, right before I started that powerlifting plan. Yeah. I was doing, I was getting Zoom trained at home. Yeah. And the guy was having me do a uh, interval thing where it was like 40. Interval training is great. Yeah. yeah. But so one of the one of the like sequences was it was a barbell with light weight on it, mm-hmm. but it was supposed to you were supposed to like clean and just press it overhead. Right. But like rapid fire. Like go, go, go. Go, 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 go for right. 40 yeah, seconds. Yeah. He's like, keep going, keep going, keep going. I remembered that I had one of them up and I think I got lazy with it. I just kind of dropped my shoulder, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, that feels 
like it has not felt the same since. It's been a few months now. Up tight up here. It's, and it's somewhere yeah, in my shoulder. shoulder. And like I, there's certain positions where I can feel it in, right. like clicking, and I'm like something's wrong. Ah. So I told my doctor I was like, like I don't know what it is, and I've continued to work out, but there's def, it's definitely something's wrong with my left shoulder. Right. And he was like, uh, just uh, go to this guy. I'll give you a shot. And I was like, but. Mm. Are we gonna find out what's wrong with it? And he's like, the guy. he's like, just get the shot. <laughs> Shut the fuck up and yeah. go get the shot. And I go, so should I keep working out? And of course, he's like, yeah, yeah. I, he's like, dude, I've already you're told gonna you die. Yeah, yeah. Work out. Work I don't out, fucking man. care. I don't just care. Just get the shot. What you do? Up. I don't care what you eat. <laughs> yeah. Just get the shot and shut up. Have you ever had that where a doctor says something that you know is bad advice? But like, we had a friend who's a doctor who goes, somebody ordered a turkey burger. We were out to lunch. I'll never forget. And he goes. Oh, turkey burger. He's a doctor. Yeah. And he goes, turkey burger. And the guy that we're with is like, uh, it's a bachelor party. And he goes, he goes, yeah, man, I just don't, I don't fucking feel like red meat today. And he was like annoyed that he, you know, cause it's yeah, I called him out. Yeah. Or... And he was like, ugh, dude, just get the burger. Like, what's the, di- do you like the taste more of a turkey burger? And he goes, no, dude, I'm just trying to be a little bit more health conscious. He goes, as a doctor, not your doctor, but as a doctor, I'm telling you the difference is minimal. Over the course of time, over the course of life, caloric, like fat content. He's like describing all this stuff. And he's like, it just, it just doesn't matter. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like it just kind of had this like, it was just a check down. He's like, because you're going to have fries and we're going to have 40 beers. Yeah. So the fucking 19 grams of fat you save yeah. will make up for somewhere else. Just eat the fucking burger. See, I'm your friend. Yeah. And my wife is that doctor. <laughs> yeah that's just like that's my life my life is like <laughs> i made a good decision today she's like just fucking just f- i know croissants make you happy just, just eat, eat a fu- i know but yeah. she, and she's right by the way i know that's the thing is that like i'll go like today i box this morning and what I, time do you box early 10 that's i can't i can't work out before night. i uh, i don't like it but i can't do i wouldn't do the lifting thing then i can do the it's because it's more like a cardio, cardio work. workout. Yeah, yeah that yeah. that to me, I don't like to do it. I don't like that eight a.m. shit. Fuck but that. I can do. That's insane. I can do ten, eleven. But anyways, I do it, and you know, whatever. I probably burn like six hundred calories a or lot, something. Yeah, yeah, a lot. It's you know, you're just pouring sweat, and I come mm-hmm. inside, and then my wife's like, "You want to try these cookies?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I just like you see me yeah. soaking wet." She's like, and she's, "She's always like, you're, what is it going to kill you?" Yeah. I'm like I know, but like, can't you just imply? No, she's right. Yeah, she's right. Like my dad just did this to me. My like, my old man goes, "This is my favorite. This is how my dad thinks now. Now that he, like my dad's been retired, this is like everything to my yeah. dad. He'll find something that pro- dads do this in general. They find something that proves what they already wanted to believe. Yeah. Like he he goes I, he goes uh, I read this article on Do- Golf Digest. Uh, you know, Tiger after all this working out and all these injuries, he says that he almost wishes. He never worked out because now he's in so much pain. It's like, did it really help? Who knows? Yeah. I'm like, Dad, that's insane rhetoric. To like, first of all, what he's saying is he wish he didn't worked out that hard, as that hard long. as he did. Yeah, and my dad's like, I don't know. Sounds like he wish he never worked out because yeah. my dad's trying to mail in the workout, and my mom is like, No, because now that he's retired, he won't do. Um, he's doing a lot less. I mean, he's he's come back a little bit, but for a while, the moment my dad retired, he was like, Fuck everybody <laughs> he was like give me a drink give me a bratwurst i'm gonna watch tv he just didn't want to do he's loving it yeah he was loving it dude finally he deserved it he worked his whole fucking life and he got fucked over uh he got fired from a company he worked for for three decades uh don't ever use turtle wax car wash i've said that once i'll say it again i've used it before. don't ever use it again use mcguire's use anybody else use anybody okay. mothers use anybody you want okay yeah they fired my da- they fired my dad after like you know three decades yeah of employment yeah the company was folding. It's a family-owned company. Uh, they'll be buried by the time this podcast comes out. But no, it's just it's just my dad's loyalty was insane to the company. And that was also why, I've said this before, why my dad was so into me doing what we do because he was like, yeah, you're, own, you're your own boss. Yeah, you're, it's you're great. Own, it's you're, the best. You're your own victim and you're, own, you're your own victor. So like, you're, there's no one to blame and you can take the credit, which is nice. He's like, don't, he's like, don't ever spend your whole life working for someone who doesn't give a fuck about you, which is what so true i know dude it, it, it took it, it was weird to hear because my old man was he's kind of by the book guy and he's like i say it all the time too man you know? i mean I, I endorse like that aspect of what we do 
it like really resonates with me. Yeah. Like, like I don't like people, you know, sometimes people are like, what would you be doing? I was like, I would own my own business. I know that. Yeah. I don't want to work. Well, if I wasn't and, and doing there's nothing this. wrong with working for someone else. No, there's not. Just but... remember there's a good chance they don't give a fuck about your well being. Yeah. Like when you work for some big company or corporation or whatever, you got to do whatever any American has to do. But that proved to me that man, these companies, they'll fucking spit you out after you were like, I'm loyal to you, I'm loyal to you, I'm loyal oh, to you. And they're like, yeah. cool, man. Thanks for the $8 billion over the course of so many years. Fuck off. I've had, a, my uncle got super fucked by a company he basically Spent built. This, yeah, he yeah. built, oh, he built. Yeah, like he was there, the guy that built this independent company up and. And they don't give a shit. They don't give a Isn't shit. That this wild? is who I played golf with uh, 20 years ago. I can't believe he's alive. Wow. And um, Can I say his name? Sure. This is this is Stuart Woods, an American yeah. novelist, by the way. He's got a lot of books. Eighty-two man. years old. He's he he's he's he, this is a he's a book god. Yeah. Oh, dude, I know. I've seen this guy's books. Yeah. You recognize these Stuart Woods books because you've seen them in like airports, um, yeah. kiosk he's spindles. A massive. Yeah, dude. He's he's one of these guys that does. Um, yeah, it's like thrillers, right? Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. They're like they're like crime thriller, cr crime thriller drama books. That's exactly what they are. I've seen the. I've seen a million of these. Well, I had this like. He always looks like. But this, by the way, this guy at home. We're gonna put up a photo so you can see what he looks like. They always look like that. They always look like that. Yeah. Why? Like, what is? Is that like that's? Is that like the pro athlete theory where you're like yeah, they're born like, for that? Oh, he was born to write books. <laughs> I remember this that I was mortified at. The, maybe you've had this experience where, when you start, if you're not like a really good when you're young you pick i picked i started playing golf let's say like i'm 17 or something sure and i was mortified to play with other people because i knew i wasn't good right and then that that summer i get to playing like where my parents live mm -hmm. and i got to that point where i was you know getting better getting better and feeling a little more confident where like i just don't want to embarrass like i don't want to be like people would see me and they would go like you know they would go this guy can fucking go i don't know why like I, they're like you can rip one I <laughs> so bet. Way you hold yourself. yeah and yeah. i was like shit <laughs> you know, i'll just be like embarrassed i'm gonna let you down so i'm playing with my dad and Is your dad a good golfer he, he's like a lifelong golfer. he's all right you know okay he doesn't really play anymore but you know he would like in a on a on a good day he would shoot in the 80s but on average, he's probably shooting like high eighties, nineties, you know. But like competent, like play oh, can play, can join a foursome and play. Yeah. So, you know, he's definitely the veteran taking me out, and I'm playing with him one day, and it's just the two of us. And then we come up on a hole, and there's a guy sitting in a golf cart that is not the golf cart that the course gives you. It's like yeah, it's like tricked out. Yeah, yeah, I like love a fan those. on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> and my dad's like. That's he knows he he goes that's Stuart Woods and I go what the fuck Stuart Woods he's like he's a like a big time author um, and I go <laughs> the author with a tricked out golf yeah car. I was like all right he's a fucking baller he's a baller <laughs> and I go okay and so my dad recognizes him and loves famous people mm -hmm. <laughs> celebrities so he was like he's like hey I uh, mean. I have a couple of your books. That's your dad. That's my dad. And <laughs> Stuart Woods is like, well, you got like 12 more to go. And uh, and I'm and then he's like, you mind if we play with you? And I'm like, oh, fuck. Dad, and the, the guy's like, sure. Now I'm nervous that I'm going to embarrass myself. In front of and, Stuart Woods, American novelist. In front of a, a famous novelist. author who I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, sure, you can play with me. I'm like, oh, fuck. So he goes up there to tee off. He shanks this shit so, <laughs> so hard. hard. And I was yeah. like, yes. And he yes. puts another ball down, shanks that one. Perfect. Puts a third ball down. Shut up. Hooks it. I was like, what the fuck? He does like, he hits like six of them. I, I don't He's like, breakfast ball, brunch ball. Yeah. Just, and then I was like, okay. And then we, you know, whatever, get on the fairway. He just picks a spot, throws one, hits it, fucks it up, throws another one down, hits uh, it. So I'm like, dude, he's gone through like 26 balls on this hole. And my dad's just like, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so he's an we, American novelist. Uh, he's a novelist. But dude, we play a few holes with him, and then we're like, I think we're going to split because he's so bad <laughs> that like he's he's dragging us down. Yeah, he's putting uh, your game down? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> we're better Hey, Stu, than we're going to walk. We got to go. We got to take off because you're dog shit. All right, man. And if you think I'm full shit, Orchid Island, I still fucking remember the course. Orchid Island? Yeah. 
That That's what course. it is? Yeah. Florida has a, a good place in my heart. I've talked about it before. It's where I lost my virginity. You did? Marco Island, Florida, baby. Oh, West Coast. That's right, baby. Gulf side. How old were you? 16. 16? 16. 16. Pretty young. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, 16. Uh, high school girlfriend. Traded a bottle of Captain Morgan rum for the room key. Yeah. We knew one dude that had a hotel. And I nice. was like... I was like, I'll give you a bottle of Captain Morgan rum, a handle, if I can have the room key for a little while. And he was like, how long do you need it for? I was like, <laughs> probably all night. I get in there, it was like 26 minutes later. I'm like, all right, we're going to pack up and go back we out there? Go. Uh, we just wanted to watch a show. <laughs> that bad. We wanted to watch one episode of Law and & Order, and mm. now we're back. Yeah, Marco Island, Florida. I spent so... as Is it Was it a memorable experience, like in a good way or no? Yeah, actually, because yep. for both of us, we were virgins, so it was like we decided yeah. that that was our. Th- it was. Like, I was the same. It was nice that it happened yeah. that way. Yeah, that it was like, were my first time was her first time. Yeah, because I hear the other way when people are like, it was a nightmare. I hear that from women. Women, yeah, it's always that way. Yeah, but no I, guys ever like it was her fiftieth time. It kind of would have been nice. like how nice would it have been if your first time though was a chick like you know few years older oh, who I'm, was like let me just show you uh, what we like yes and you're like okay actually you know what would have been great if i was like 20 and i waited and like a 42 year old divorcee yes. was like i'm gonna pump I'm gonna that dick suck your balls <laughs> yeah your ass. that would have been the best yeah. no but we were both and then you'd be like sex is amazing and then all your sex would be a disappointment after. right everything else <laughs> yeah. would be trash always yeah no we were we were both yeah florida had this uh we knew that's where it was it was like a were we doing mark your vacation there Spring break. Oh, spring break. Yeah, high school spring break. Well, dude, Chicago kids, Florida is our mecca. Like, Florida yeah. is where, you know, because it's a snowbird, you know, all the Midwest people go down yeah. to Florida. And California c- should be where we really end up going yeah. because too many people go to Florida, but no one can afford to go out there. But also, Florida is like, you can drive I think to about Florida. this a lot. It's so much easier to navigate oh, yeah, all dude. that stuff. Oh, like, yeah. The beaches, yep. The anything you're trying to get to and. Like if you want to park somewhere, it's easy in yep, Florida. It's there. Out here, it's a, it's a fucking nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly right. It's like, but as a kid, also flying to California was daunting. It was like, yeah, this is back when people didn't fly that much just to fly for the. You were like, you you're gonna drive there, so yeah. it was like we would drive to Florida. I mean, we would go down there, and I've been to Marco, Sanibel, all that. Like we would go to the islands if I, and usually it was with somebody else's family. <laughs> Because like yeah. my parents were like, I'm not going down. We're not paying anyone. Yeah. I was like, well, someone's good. Can I go with their family? And they're like, yeah. yeah, get the fuck out of here. Go jump in their van. And it was the road trip was half of the fun. Like all that stuff was fucking great. Yeah. It was like kind of like that's what made the, the Florida was great. But getting there was great too, which I don't think we'll ever have again. Because I don't think road trips, unless the pandemic collapses the airline industry, road trips just aren't a thing for like your kids generation won't really road trip no unless you for fun are like we'll go to the grand canyon I don't, whatever you won't you won't but like our generation it was kind of like that was still a fun thing to go do the the uh 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 why can't i think um, the uh chevy chase what's wrong with me um chevy chase vacation yeah the original yeah. vacation it was like that's what america was at that time was like yeah, we'll drive there. You're like, it's so far. Like, Isn't it weird so that, what? that there's a Chevy Chase, Maryland? Yeah, there's a Chevy Chase Boulevard here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, well, is he that? No. Is he that beloved? <laughs> I think that name means something. We don't know about <laughs> Wait, I mean, I've said that before. I'm like, is that a thing? And I'm too dumb to know that it, there I was think a guy so. named Chevy Chase. Should we Google before? it right now? Yeah, will you Google Let's Chevy Chase? Because honestly, there's a Chevy Chase Boulevard in, I think it's, I want to say it's, it's right next to Griffith Park. I think it's right over there. There's a Chevy Chase Avenue or Boulevard. And I was like, <laughs> dude, do you know how like when you Google, it also has like common questions asked about. Something? Yeah, also ask. Yeah. The t- the number one one put in just Chevy Chase. It says, "What is wrong with Chevy Chase? <laughs> <laughs> what is the matter with Chevy Chase? It's well, because so... you've heard all these stories where he's like, you know, these the lore of Chevy where he's like." Doesn't want to work anymore and is kind of pissy and mad and angry. Have you heard any of this stuff? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you heard like I think maybe Dan Harmon had talked about on the set of Community. He yeah. was like grumpy and mad and but but also, I want to side with him for two seconds. I got a guy that I don't know. I guess after like forty years in the business, 
Yeah. I probably would be like, all right, fuck everything. I'm doing this because oh, I yeah. just have to pay bills. And as an actor, there's no real retirement plan that doesn't exist. Like, you don't, you know what I mean? It's like. People also forget, though, like with him, and I would say this will be like kind of generationally removing people from, like, but he was one of the biggest box office stars in yeah. the world. Yeah, in the world. And I thought of, um, it was actually before my time, but I learned this same. about. Burt Reynolds. Yeah, same. Um, they're like, do you don't understand though? Like, had a string of like seven years yeah. as the number the one. The guy. Yeah, and then it's like when that changes and mm -hmm. you're just like, everyone's still, well, people like you, but you're just an actor now. Yeah, you're a guy. Uh, that's got to be. It's got to be hard. Well, but also it's kind of hard to see in a business where like there's people, dude, that have made like nine, 10, 11 box office bombs yeah. and the business is still like we love them yeah but you're like but they keep eating shit yeah like I don't think you could name one I don't think you could name one legitimate Jennifer Aniston movie where you're like oh dude it's the movie's incredible it's an amazing movie no and I'm not shitting on her it's like she's just been in a lot of stuff where you're like it's okay I don't know yeah but friends they love like, but friends but friends. But it just helps. Like, I just, just saw helps. a thing where Colin Farrell yeah. was, he was starring in things for a while. Yeah. And he said in something recent, like you could probably find it, right. that he's never been happier than when he w was like, when he could no longer be the, the name above the title. Uh, he said he loves his, I mean, you know, someone can just say that, but he's like, it's such a freeing thing to Yeah, I'm sure because the pressure must be absurd to carry a movie. Yeah. Like like we've known Tiffany had I we've known Tiffany Hatch for years as a stand up. Yeah. When she became a movie star name, movie star, the pressure is absurd because they're like, well, you are this thing now, and if they don't like it, then we look at you for some reason. But you're like, what about the studio? What about the writers? What about the producer? What about? And the way people like criticize her is crazy. Yeah, everyone's I'm like, gonna, why are you so mad? If about If you're something? up there, you're gonna get it. Yeah. You, they, they they we are. I don't know the term, but we love to. We love to go as high as you can get. Yeah, and, and then, then when you're up there, you're like, come on down. Come on down. Yeah. It's such a sick business. I wanted to educate you a little bit. Yeah, please. The name Chevy Chase <laughs> is derived from Chevy Chas. They made the name of the land patented to Colonel Joseph Belt from Charles Calvert, 5th Baron Baltimore on July 10th, 1725. Holy shit. It has historic associations to a 1388 battle between Lord Percy of England and Earl Douglas of Scotland, uh, the subject of the ballad entitled The Ballad of Chevy Chase. Wow. At issue in this chevalcy, a French word describing a border raid or hunting grounds, or a chasse in the Cheviot the Chevio Hills of Cheviot Hills. Cheviot Hills of North Umberland and Otterburn. We have Chevy Hills here. We do? Yeah, we have a Chevy Hills here. Um, it's so... Uh, I don't Wait, know. so this, what is his... So is his real name not Chevy Chase? I have no... I'm, I'm reading about <laughs> the name, the word... I mean, oh, you just got okay, on, okay. So we despite rumor and thread. speculation, yeah. Chevy Chase, Maryland has no direct relation to actor and comedian Chevy Chase. Both are named after the British ballot. He was named... So his, he just happens to come from Chase, a uh, last name Chase, and, and is named that as such. Yes, his real name is Cornelius, Cornelius Crane, Crane yeah. Chase. Yeah. And it looks like Chevy Chase, Maryland, was named the most affluent town in the United States. Most affluent town? Yeah. Maryland? Chevy mm. Chase, Maryland. Chevy Chase, Maryland. Yeah. yeah. No shit. Mm. Maryland? You've been to the Northeast, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I get lived that. there. I lived in uh, College Park for a while. For where University of Maryland. For is. school. Yeah, I was just going to say. I, I didn't but go there. School but school is always different because. Oh, you didn't go to school? You just around? I, it was, I, I, I mean, I just like you know, college. I uh, love college parties. I love college parties. You know what's so funny about that? I partied with guys at ASU. Yeah. That were like 24. You went to ASU? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, man. I know. I know. We wiped down the chair before you sat in it. Thank you. Uh, I I remember partying with like 22, 24 year olds when we were 19, 20, we first got in. And you're like, they're 58. Yeah. I was like, yeah. these guys are 106. But I was yeah. also like, they're the coolest dudes on earth. Yeah. I was like, what do you do? And the guy's like, Jiffy Lube. And you're like, fucking dude, what are you, a billionaire? Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? Six houses uh, already? Never, dude. Yeah, we had dudes that like party with us that didn't go to college, but lived in college. They lived in college. Like they would meet us on campus. They would hang out. Like they were in college, but they weren't in college. Yeah. It was the weirdest feeling of I like, remember being in college and having 
non like, college like college yeah friends. like local yeah local local and i went to a really small school so like you see them you notice them more you know what i mean you're like yeah you've been at the, you've been at these parties for a while now he's like i'll never leave dude yeah started at 17 i'll never, never fucking leave. go away dude yeah bryson yeah that was a lot there was a lot of california transplants in, in arizona of, those schools have the both of them u of a and asu have just insane reputations. Yeah, for what? For academics, you mean? You for like biology. Yes, we are the we are the best at bio. We're yep. the best at chemistry. Yep. And ironically, also at math. That's crazy. Yeah, I went to school. I got my degree in um, hydroponic chemical engineering, uh, with a minor in heart surgery as a focus. That's a, I'd never even heard of that. Yeah, it's a new class. It's one class. Heart, heart surgery. Heart surgery focus, yeah. Heart focus. surgery focus, yeah. And you don't have to go to med school because, well, at least what the professor says, med school is is a lot of fodder. It's a lot of books and like... But uh, isn't that how you would be good at it? I don't think so. I think you just have to talk about it as much as you can. We talked about it often, about what surgery would be like. Is it scary? Have you done a heart surgery? No. Oh my God, what are you nuts? No, oh. no. I just We just talked about it often, but I have a degree oh. for it. I don't think I can perform. I think it's highly illegal. But I do think the degree sets me up for a future in what could be perhaps consultation online. Have you ever witnessed uh, a surgery? Uh, no. No. Have you? Many. Really? Yeah. I had the wild idea that I wanted to be a doctor, a surgeon. You did? Well, this is young, though. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I was like a freshman in high school. And I tell, I'm like, I think I want to be a doctor. I mean, I'm a freshman. Aren't your parents like, come on. Tom. Yeah, of course. But I think they're like, well, this is a good sign. It's a good sign, but yeah. also like, like no. he's fucking dumb. He's not going to do it. <laughs> he can't get But going. I was like, yes, I do. I mean, I'm very convincing, you know? And yeah. they're like, okay. So I go, I think I want to be like a surgeon though, you know? So yeah. my dad calls his brother, who's like a well-known doctor, who sets me up. Is your dad a doctor, by the way? No. Okay. His brother. And... uh Tests me up to go to the Mayo in Jacksonville and witness surgery, like, for a day. To just be a part of it. Like, I get there, 7 a.m., and I'm a, I'm a freshman. I remember that the one of the doctors goes, what school do you go to? I was a, kind of a big kid, you know? Yeah. I mean, for a freshman in high school, I was probably, uh, I don't know, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and, like, 185 or something. Full so, size. Full size. Yeah. And he was like, what school do you go to? And I, I say my high school, and he's like... That's a university? And I go, I'm in high school. He was like, you're in high school. <laughs> so I think he thought he was also taking... Did you eat the other high school boys? Well, he's like, he goes like, why are you... Do like, he thought he was going to take like a college kid. Yeah, right, right, right. And he's like, so you're here. I was like, I want to do this. <laughs> and he was like, okay. All right. So I witnessed 13 surgeries that day. Holy fuck. They start me like, first thing, like I'm at the hospital... 6 30 in the morning yeah and this guy he's like all right and he takes me and like the first surgery we witness is to an 87 year old woman who's having a cyst removed from her vagina oh my god and i go in there and he's like you're gonna stand here he goes like so i'm standing at the foot of the bed and you stand in like just, a and just stare, and staring all straight yeah. up yeah yeah <laughs> i'm covered and everything <laughs> And he goes, uh, he go, come here, come here. And he pulls me aside. He goes, just so you know, she's not under. So if you say something, she can hear it. And I go, <laughs> She's okay. awake for the surgery? Yeah, she's just like uh, anesthetized. Ah, right, right, from Below down. the waist. Yeah, yeah. Do they start? And like, so there's this 87-year-old pussy just like wide open in front of me. And I'm like, all right. I'm That's gonna, how you knew you were I, gay. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and then he kind of, he's like, they go in there. And then he, he's like, here's the cyst. And then he's like, holy shit. Like, this is enormous. So they start bringing in other people to look at it. And then they go, like, Edith. And she's like, yes. He goes, we're going to take some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, okay. We just want to post this stuff, He's man, like, on uh, MySpace. This is wild. Goes, We've never seen one this size. So this is going to be in a journal. 
but your face won't be in the photos or anything like that, okay? She's, she just gives like a yeah. rock on above it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so they start taking pictures. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God. And then he pops it. And it's just, oh, little. Yeah, it's just like oozing. He, oh my God. And we leave that and he was like, wasn't that something? And I go, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get into stand-up comedy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, let's go watch some more surgeries. Fuck that. Like I don't, that to me... I, I've always had a stomach for stuff that's like that turns people, but I never understood how someone could like over and over want to open people up. I was always like, Ooh, like we did the uh, frog in, uh, you know, in uh, bio or whatever. You know, you have to open yeah. up the frog. And that made people sick. I remember kids puking in class. And it never made me sick, but I was like, who would want to do this over Puke. and over? Oh, I know. Who would want to do well, it? I listen, was like, it's so weird to I, open I shit up. I spent that day and I was like, I don't want to do surgery. Oh, uh-uh, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. No way. I never get the whole idea of like, I could be co- okay with doing it if I have to do it, but there's people that are so comfortable yeah. that it doesn't, bu- it, it's like a, it's, I thought about this the other day when I was at the, when I was going to get the, the, my, my ankle looked at in the medical building as I'm passing these hallways and passing like, um, there was uh, an optometrist and a podiatrist, there's a, you know, every kind of doctor. And as I was in the waiting room, I thought about that. I was like, God, I wonder what it's like to make the decision of like, I guess this will be my focus because I definitely don't want to do that. And I know internally they probably talk shit to each other. They're like, sure. what are you, they're like, what are you? It's like, uh, I'm a uh, podiatrist or an orthopedist. And they're like, oh, bitch. Oh. Like, do they shit on each other? Absolutely. Yeah. So like, if you do, if you're, if you're a surgeon, they're like top, top tier shit. And they look at the other doctors like bitches. Like, oh, is that you? They fucking? absolutely do. That's so funny they, to they, me. They, General surgeons, I'm saying, are up there. Uh, Cardiol, like heart surgeons. Well, that's legit. Neurologists, right? You know, you're doing like. Who's the lowest? Of the, like, who's the one that they mock the most? Well, I mean, I'm sure it's probably chiropractors, you know. Yeah. But then, <laughs> even if you're, are just you gonna like, fix his back? They mock. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're like, you're not. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure they they definitely all. If you're like, you know, your general physician, they realize that you're you're a necessity. You, yeah. You're needed, but they're like. They they well, are. What are you really they're doing? Like, you know that they I'm, call him Wikipedia. I'm way above you. Yeah. <laughs> like, here comes Doctor Wikipedia yeah, with his fucking, oh, fucking with his generalized WebMDs here, everyone. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, are you gonna guess what someone has again, yeah. Mike? Is that you, what you're gonna do? So your whole thing is that you refer your patients to us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? Because I saw a thing. Uh, uh, someone just was making fun of that. Oh, there's a show called Floor Is Lava on Netflix that people are watching now. Hmm. Do you know about this bullshit? Floor Is Lava. Yeah, it's like a it's like a gauntlet game show. Three people they try to get through a room where the floor is literally like bubbling fucking lava and they have to jump from thing to thing to thing to get to the exit and if they fall in they lose and points. it's real or scripted it's real lava real lava. no it's it's no it's a it's like a game show it's a game show yeah, okay no um but but during one point they had doctors versus nurses and the doctors were like yeah you know like no we love our nurses like they're the best like they yeah yeah they're, they're wonderful and the nurses were like did they talk shit because we do like all the fucking work. Like they just get to like saunter in and like read a fucking notebook that we like. They were so <laughs> annoyed. I love it. I they love were. It. it was. It was like funny that they were like, "Oh, what? Did, like, what did they say they do?" Because they're like yeah. GPs. Like they, we, like we do everything. And the one girl was like, "No, seriously. Like we, like she's like listing off all this shit that you could tell that there was such a, there's such like this internal clashing where they're like, "Don't think you're fucking. You're not better. Yeah. Than this. It's like, well, I am better than you. And they're like, no, fuck you. Like yeah, we yeah. do the thing." You just get to take credit for the it's thing. It's a very classist thing, I think, especially with doctors and, and, and nurses. nurses. For That's... sure. For sure. And I think, I mean, because here's the thing, like if you're, you know, a nurse has a, actually has a, a pretty extensive education. Of course. Really knows. Yeah, to get there is, is not just like, you don't just like sign up. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I think that they're less dismissed. I mean, they're, you know, there's probably jokes with doctors, but the way that like civilians are like, you're a nurse. It's like, I'm sure that they're probably like, <laughs> Do you do know that I'll I would save your I could save your life yeah, right. right like that is true yeah they just get kind of brushed off as like you're a part of the process yeah which is a bummer because it's almost like yeah they're not parking attendants <laughs> like they're well it's how it's how that's how doctors treat nurses the way from just what I've heard you treat everyone that's ever opened for you oh I'm you you savage. are brutal yeah. you're brutal somebody told me one time whoever was opening for you a couple of years ago not only did you not they couldn't get a hotel. You forced them to, uh, you rented a car at Hertz. You rented like a Chevy Volt and you made them sleep in the car. I did. And but I also. You wouldn't turn it on. No I heat. I don't turn no, it on. No wow. heat. You got it. Cause it's about, you know, getting like, I realize I'm a coach for these 
you know, openers. What were you going to say? You were going to say bitches? Well, I was going to say, I, Is that what you're gonna say, I also asked for a feature gift. But so they have to bring you They have something. to bring me a gift. And oh, so the wow. first time that I, you know, was educating one of them on it, and they were like, well, what's a feature gift? And I'm like, well, you gift the headliner mm -hmm. as a way of saying, you know, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And she, the opener, was like, well, how do I, how much should I spend? And I go, how much are you earning this week? Right. So she said, you know, five hundred dollars. And I right. go, something around five hundred dollars. Five to six hundred dollars. Yeah, should be. They should gift. be willing to take a loss to open for you. Yeah, of course. Financially, I have because I have heard what you typically do is if a feature is getting a certain amount of money, let's just make an arbitrary. And let's just yeah. say like, oh, they get seven hundred dollars. I've heard that you dock depending on what how many jokes you don't like. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, if like I go, if you don't open strong, right? Um, so is it how how do you dock? Is it ten dollars, twenty dollars? Wild. If you have a wildlife joke, you immediately lose a hundred bucks. Really? Know? So yeah. it's out. Out. And what's the biggest detrimental joke? Like, what joke can they tell that you really take away the most money? What is it that that's like the thing that they just to inform <sighs> listeners in case they don't know that you really start taking away money if they do a certain kind of joke or? Yeah, I mean, like if they do an accent or like you know right. something about like oh you know one time I. I was with my mom and you oh, know family stuff. Yeah, yeah. Then so I'll, you really cut it. Then it's then they I'll just go right to half. Yeah. I'll, I'll have you ever made sure that people that work with you don't get paid at all? I try to. Like I'll you know if I do if I do a club I'll yeah. just I'll tell the club I'll go Are you planning on paying them? And they'll be like Yeah. And I'll go Just give it to me. Wow. You know. Yeah. And, and then they go like You'll pay them and I go Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll pay them. I mean, it's a look. It's your. It's your comedic choice uh, yeah. as a performer to do what you want but I do think that's well weird. I like to remind them I like to go like to when they're like oh, I didn't get paid I'm like oh did, did everyone come out to see you <laughs> is that what you say to them yeah yeah I guess I get that and it is your ask show ask any of them they'll tell you yeah. Like, oh, yeah can I ask you one more intimate question that, yeah. that's kind of along the comedy lines there's rumors on the internet that your son mm -hmm. is a ghostwriter for some of your material yeah you're willing to admit that on the show you're willing to admit that today that your son actually does write some of your stuff. So where uh, where are you gonna where are you gonna join? You think to play, dude? The deflection is so obvious. I'm not deflecting. I'm saying you you're were deflecting, talking, dude. You said you were gonna join. You're them. deflecting because your son writes your shit. Now you're saying that because. And I can, I cannot wait for this to come out so people can hear finally that like people always are like Tom's so funny. Like I have friends that go, I love Tom. I love I, like oh you're friends with Tom. I said yeah yeah we're cool yeah yeah I love Tom. And, oh dude I think Tom's so funny. He's a genius. People say that kind of bullshit that they think you they think you're this comedic fucking like a phenomenal comedic entertainer and you're so funny and and I, for years i've been like there's no fucking way yeah that he that he does his own stuff yeah and i thought that he doesn't steal jokes from peers because i know you don't steal yeah. from comedians but i go he's jack he's getting it from somewhere so if you because he is I, it your son I've, for real here's what i've heard yeah i've heard that you can join a club socially or you can <laughs> join them to play just like just play yeah. golf but you get a better deal. Yes, I think if you just, I think if you join socially, but then you don't have golf access. Well, so you I, gotta, you to, gotta, to be honest. Yeah, um, I'm not joining a club. That was just to bait you to find out. What You're not gonna pull. You have. I just wanted to find out if you could, if you could have some pull in some town to get me into something. Do you feel like when you argue with someone that mm -hmm. your heart rate goes down? Yeah, actually. Really? Yeah. That's that's a psychopathic. Trait. Yeah, it goes way down. <laughs> Like if we get into a debate, I calm down. You calm down? Yeah, because I feel like I, I have to because you, you sink low. Everything slows down, so I can start picking out stuff. So like, you, your heart rate doesn't race, and you don't get short of breath. No, at any moment I like like I saw that I saw that big gold thing over there, and I yeah. thought I could hit him over the head with that and hurt him bad. And that calmed you down. It calm, makes me feel good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good sign. That gives me like a, a like a, a solace of of the yeah, moment. Doctor knowing. Drew was telling me about that. He was like, you know, and some people. Because we were watching a confrontation on a, on a video clip. Arguments? Yeah. And I was like, he was like, Tell you me know, it was the, the woman calls the, the girl an N-word and she fights her. That one? No, it was a different one. God, it was, is it, one. So that it was so a funny. neighbor. It was a neighbor who was mad at his neighbor for burning dirty. I'd never even, uh, oh, he meant yeah. using dirty firewood. He's yeah. like, oh, this fucking, your fucking smoke is dark. Yep. And he was going crazy. Using bad wood, you're burning up. And he was, and Drew was like, you know, there are people who when they do this, when they confront, 
their heart rate actually lowers. Like they go, they it makes them feel good to have the confrontation. Wow. They're like, in, they get they, into they, a calm they state. Get off on Whereas it. most of us would be like, the fuck? And you'd feel your heart rate go up and you feel your kind of your throat dry out. Right. And you're like, you know, you can even feel like the. <laughs> You that know? anxiety. Yeah, he's like, no, this guy. He's like, this might just be like a thing he does, and it, he feels good after it. I had a, there was a woman who was flying through the neighborhood. This is crazy, because like if a guy was doing something and I got into an, a, a verbal alterca- altercation with a guy at this age that you're like, I'm not fighting a guy. This is fucking insane. Unless yeah. he's doing something I need to like really defend. Somebody. Yeah. But with a guy, I'd be like, oh fuck you, and I'd probably stay the same heart rate. Yeah. My heart went through the roof because it was a woman. This woman. Because she, her her confidence was staggering. Yeah, dude, she was flying down the street in our neighborhood. We're walking our dog, and our neighborhood's quiet as fuck. And she's flying in this truck. And as she goes by, I do the very dad bullshit. I'm like, slow down. I do the slow down. I throw yeah. slow down. And her windows open. <laughs> Slams on her brakes. She puts it in reverse. I'm not kidding. It puts it now, in a, you, when it goes. Skrr! And are you? You're, yes, my yeah. heart was like. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I saw it was like this little yeah. tiny girl, and she's like, "What the fuck did you say, you fucking bitch?" And I was like, "I said slow down. You're flying through the neighborhood. I'm trying to keep my composure." But inside, I'm like, "Dude, this lady is crazy. crazy. <laughs> she's gonna kill me." Yeah. She's. If it was a dude, I probably would have been like, "Oh fuck you, bro. Get the fuck out." This woman was tight. She could barely over the wheel. Her head was like a foot over the wheel. And she's like, what is that? Yeah. Oh, am I going too fast for you? You pussy. And I swear to what? God, dude was emasculating the shit out of me. And I'm like, you need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you need to slow down in the neighborhood. I, I like, I couldn't get it out. Cause I was, I couldn't believe she had the, I thought no way is this woman going to back yeah. up and be like, you fucking bitch. And then I go, just, I go. And then I started doing this. I started saying, you need to relax. You need to relax. Oh, that killed her. That you killed need, her. Oh, yeah, dude. She, she's like, oh, I need to relax. How old You're was fu- she? Huh? How old was it? Oh, uh, maybe, I mean, 38, but with drugs, 46. Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? You could, she had a tough day. She had a really tough yeah. time. Usually, like, the, the druggies, though. Yeah. They'll do that shit. Oh, I, yeah. I've had the confrontation. Oh, she's ready with, to fight. Yeah. I had a, This was not drug-related. Mm-hmm. I have a car where um, I just had a crazy exhaust put into it, mm-hmm. and I was shifting manually and so i went to shift in in this neighborhood and you could hear like the like when i shifted i wasn't going crazy fast but it does sound so but it sounds nice and this guy walked down the street he just goes like this i've been that guy by the way so you know what i did Mm -hmm. i was was just kind of a psycho move i was driving i went (laughs) like that yeah i like like fast cars and then i just kept going yeah you don't you don't have to stop for that guy no but i do think if you're flying through I, I, if you're going super fast, like absurdly fast on the freeway or on major roads, I'm cool with it because I like fast too. Yeah. Neighborhoods. Resident, no, no, it's not cool residential. I just think you're a dick. Like, you are. If you want to speed, go on the main road. If you want to flip your car on the freeway, do it, dude. Yeah. I, I want to watch it. Whenever I see someone flying, I'm always like, do it. <laughs> I want it. When people are cutting yeah. through lanes, yeah. my, my dad is always like, look at this fucking guy. You know the guy that's yeah. a changing lane, changing yeah, lane? Yeah, yeah. My dad's always like, this asshole. And I'm always like, nah, I love it because I want to see, ring, ring, ring. Yeah, I want to yeah. watch it. Yeah, if sure. I'm behind it, I want to see it. When I was a kid, I've told the story before. My dad and I watched, I watched a car, no shit. I watched a car go from the opposite side of a freeway over onto our side of the freeway with my That's, own two eyes. Yep. Watched it happen. He must have either fallen asleep or avoided clipping someone and went over a, sh- wasn't a medium. It was the old, there wasn't concrete mediums. It was, um, it was like on the Kennedy Expressway and it was a, uh, like a guardrail. They were almost like mini guardrails. You know, they were just single strips. Flipped over there. It, it cracked over and then and spun. Yeah, watched it happen as a kid. I was like nine. I remember I remember it so vividly and it was like on the news. It was this big thing and the whole time I was like, we were there. We were there. Yeah. It was f- absurd and I don't even know what ended up happening. Everybody died but whatever the case, it's like if someone's going to be crazy on the freeway, it's like that's the spot to do it, I guess. Uh, yeah. If you're going to be absurd, have you gotten an absurd speeding ticket in one of these things? Because you you like a zoom zoom fast car guy. I like a zoom zoom fast. No, I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in a while, and I've never gotten a. I've never gotten pinched when I was doing. I I was going. When pretty, you were doing coke when you were speeding. Well, <laughs> I got pulled over. I just remembered this. I got pulled over about six months ago, going pretty fast. What are we talking? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I over a hundred. There was the thing is like it I was, was in a school zone. You were going 185. No, no, I was I was doing that thing where you know it was a night drive. Uh, I was coming back to LA. Yeah, 
and it was like that you'd hit pockets where you can floor it but then like yeah. you see cars you slow down you know it's like freeway driving after 10:30 90 to 100 yeah you're in that zone mm-hmm. and i saw i got lit up i was like fuck and they she let me go it was a female did she know who you were no she, she was, didn't know who you were she didn't say anything because i feel like people that let go it's only cuz they know who you are why would cops let you go when you're speeding She's probably a fan and didn't say it. I got pulled over again last week. Now you remind me. I got pulled over last week (laughs) in a different car, (laughs) and and he let me go. go. Yeah, Yeah. he knew who you were. There's no fucking... You know how many people are listening like, fuck, you got... When people get pulled over, the cop has no reason to not give you a ticket. Well, he goes, goes, where are you going so fast? This is what he said last week. How polite. I I know. I go, I'm sorry? And he goes, where are you going so fast? And I go, I didn't even realize I was going fast. (laughs) Like, like you didn't I was like you I, didn't? I go was I I go I you know I'm and then I go I'm sorry I was just and he goes was that your friend there cuz I was driving with someone mm-hmm. who was in another car Oh yeah and I go ah. yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't so, know. Is there, is there, is that guy there's a guy up there and then he goes uh all right give me you know I gave him everything and yeah he's like uh he comes down he writes something down and he goes uh he gives me my lies he goes do me a favor and I go yeah he goes slow it down for me and I go Sure, yeah. Tom Segura. That was it. He knew who you were. I don't know. Yes, dude. Yes, because I'm not famous like you're famous. I have like a few people that go, oh, I kind of recognize this weirdo. Aren't you from a thing that I don't like? And I go, <laughs> yes. And and when I get pulled over, every time I've gotten tickets. I, I, have, I, have, I have a felony ticket from my, from my past for you going do? double the speed limit. Yeah. But that's when I first started in comedy and I was doing those uh, triple runs. How fa- wait, what, how fast were you going? 130. 130. In a... Well, it was a 65 zone, I think, yeah. Where were you? Outside of Nevada, on, how, the, on the way to Winnemucca. How fat is that ticket? I mean, this was all this was 12 years ago, 13 years ago, but it was uh, it was a felony charge that I had to go to court for. Holy shit. Yeah, which was crazy, because they can, they can, if it's double the speed limit, it is a felony, right? Um, and uh, they don't have to write it as a felony write-up ticket. It can, it, can, it can be just a violation. And they could choose to make it a felony. Mm-hmm. But Something I tells think, me that, like, go ahead. When he met you, yeah, yeah. he was like, "I kind of mm-hmm. want to make this a family. Yeah, same. Th- yeah, it's happened to me my whole life with cops. I've always had an adverse reaction to cops. I, my cops are my family, and I respect them. Yeah. But the moment I get pulled over, I'm like, "This isn't why I pay for you." I get so, <laughs> dude. I get. I don't say that, but I get so annoyed that I'm like, "You're. This is why." Go get a guy that's killing somebody or raping somebody. Like, why You're am I speeding? You're that yeah, guy. Yeah, I fucking hate it. Yeah. Why are you getting me? I'm going a little fast. My uh, older sister, I have an older sister and a younger sister. My older sister. Your older sister is 92. 92 years old. Wild. It's crazy. Yeah. We we're born so far apart. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she uh, she has been the, per- the, the person at fault in 13 or 14 car accidents. What? Yeah. Take her license away. I know. That's it. What state is this in? A few, but mostly <laughs> in Wisconsin and Florida. She's a national problem on the road. She's, it's unbelievable. Well, time out. Let me ask you something, not to cut you off. Yeah. In Wisconsin, there isn't a three strike law. So maybe that's why she, because you know. That's where she started driving. Okay. Because I don't know if you know this. This is a, We used to joke about this in Chicago. Wisconsin has no law for, in DUI culture. If you get three DUIs, you have a license. Uh, your license is expelled for the rest of your life, right? In, you, yeah. Well, three strike law states: California, yeah, yeah. Most places that Illinois have Illinois like that. Yeah, if you have three three DUIs, you're done for done. Yeah. Wisconsin does not have a three strike law for DUIs. There was a woman. Sorry to interject, but there was a woman. I remember reading stories. She had twelve DUIs. Yeah, I've always heard those stories. And you're but like, Wisconsin. Because Wisconsin cops are like, come on, Betty, get home, will you? And she's like, all right, you get it at home. They're like, wow, oh, shit. Gotta take you in. Come on. We got, will you follow us? Will you follow us? Can you, like, Wisconsin has that like drinking country lifestyle like, yeah, where they're like, I she's thought fine. you were queer. Yeah. <laughs> like falls asleep. Yeah, we got to take her in. Yeah, so your sister started with one of her dozen in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah so she, yes. That, so even minor things like backing up into a light pole. Backing up into a parked car. Come on. Consi- but they're considered... They are accidents. Accidents. Yeah. Uh, barking, uh, leaving um, or crashing into the crashing into the island at a gas station I thought while, you were you're, while you're just leaving the gas just station. Just taking off? Yeah. Just hit and then like damage the whole side <laughs> of the car. Go, leaving a kid, leaving a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but she's also... Don't think it's just... The, she's also been T-boned and she's also... Oh, she's been hit. 
but at her fault. Like, of course. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. course. She's yeah, been course. T-boned. She's rear-ended people. She's T-boned other cars. Have you driven, in a, have you been in a vehicle with her recently? Yeah, she just has no spatial awareness. Not recently, no, no. Right. And like, also, you know, there, it's, it's one of those things too, like if you like driving, there's things that you think are intuitive that yes. somebody who is a bad driver, you're like, what are you doing? I, sh- I couldn't and, agree fucking more. It's crazy. And like, it's, it's, uh, you're like, uh, you're doing this you're like, all how, wrong. Why would you do it like that? You know when yeah. you say that when you go, why? Okay. Yeah. You're like, why aren't you going right now? Yeah. Why did you stop? Right. <laughs> why are you right. turning here? Right. Like all of that. So, why? But I remember, I remember as one of the, like my dad is pretty composed, you know? Like I've yeah. seen him get mad, but he's pretty composed. And when we were in high school, I remember they had like a built-in dresser to the wall. In your room? In, in his room. Oh, okay. Like the dresser was, like it came with the house. It's right. built into yeah. the wall. And I remember that my mom told him something and he was opening a drawer and he pulled it out of the wall and the whole thing came out of the wall. And I was like, oh, shit. shit. And so I was like, what happened? And she had told him that my sister had just called and told her that she got a speeding ticket for going 105 in a 55. And he was like, she was 16 or 17. Mm-hmm. And then, so he was so mad. And then he called her and he was like, what are you doing? And she was like, I was dancing. Like, that's why I didn't know. She was dancing? She was, he was like, wait a minute, you're driving. And she was like, yeah, but I was like, <laughs> driving and no, dancing. No, you're driving a vehicle. No. No, she's like, I was, I was raging, like, I didn't dude. really realize how fast I was going. <laughs> I like your sister. Yeah. Although I never want to be near her on the road. In a vehicle, it's ever. real dangerous. Well, be safe, Tom. Okay, Thank don't you. ever get near your sister ever again in a car. Uh, I, I want to say this. I really appreciate you as a person, as a comedian, and as a friend because you're great at all three. Before on the episode, I want to say, this is me being sincere. When I started this podcast, I was going to, Tom was going to help me out. And uh, I was very grateful for it. And I mean that. And the only reason I didn't take help from Tom is because Christina's advice was just better than yours. Yeah. Genuinely. genuinely. Christina was more intuitive. She was smarter. She had just better ideas. Yep. Tom said, you should rent an airplane hangar at LAX and do it from there. Yep. I went there. They wanted $8,700 a month for a closet. And then I was like, what about the whole hanger? Tom says, I need the hanger. And they were like, that's insane. It's 150 grand. It was crazy. Yeah, Yeah, I couldn't. Anyway, I didn't take your advice, and I'm glad I didn't because it was so ill. It was such bad advice. But um, I appreciate you. Because when I started this podcast, literally, you were one of the people I talked to about it. I was like, yeah, I kind of want to do it. Is this a bad idea? No, no. And you were very promotional of it, and I appreciate you for that. Um, Absolutely. You've taught me a lot as a friend. As a comedian, you've taught me that you can you can get away with anything on stage as long as you pretend like it's funny. And that's, right. that, that's something I've learned from you. And I learned that you know, from my son. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being here. And I end every episode the same way. I want you to look in the camera when I get off camera. Okay. And I want you to end it with one word or one phrase of your choosing. I'm going to walk off and then you are in an episode. Look in the camera, one word or one phrase. Piggy. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You won't 